Okay, so how to how to realize the the eternal self, the enlightened self within. So I'll start off by just uh, mentioning um, to frame this introduction what St. Francis said. I believe St. Francis was a mystic and he said what you're looking for is where you're looking from. And that's what we'll be exploring in self-inquiry. What you're looking for is where you're looking from. And, um, and as St. Francis said in his famous prayer, it's in dying that one is born to eternal life. So what are we gonna what are we gonna kill so that we can recognize our eternal life? Well, eternal life must be unkillable, must be undestroyable, must be untouchable, must be unfragmentable, must be beyond time, beyond rust, beyond age, beyond location. It must be beyond the near or far. It must be beyond a this or a that. It must be beyond a physical body. It must be beyond bodies. It must be beyond separation. It must be beyond thoughts. And as St. Francis says, to find it, you have to look, in, you have to be in the position of looking from not looking at. So the ego is always seeing itself as being real and is looking at outside things. But what's looking at the ego? And that would be the place that we find the eternal, the undiable, the uncorrodable, the ultimate truth. So Again, to find that which is eternal, can the eternal be anything that's transitory or anything that passes? So all kinds of things in this world seem to be changing, transitory or passing. So is there any one constant? Is there, only, is there anything eternal that can be recognized which is not in the realm of the changing or the passing, that which can arise and pass and, and fall away. What is always consistently, can always eternally be recognized and can never die or change and cannot be affected by anything within this world of constant change and passing. So first we need to, as you're listening to this, we need to see what, it, what is being experienced. Now when it, <clears throat> if there is experience, for experiencing to happen, then something must be identifying with that experience. So I'd like you, as you're listening to this video, to become aware of what you're conscious of. What is your ego hooking into at the moment? Are you aware of your body? Is there a belief that you are the body? Is, does it seem like the body is you? Are you identifying with thoughts? Does it seem like the mind or the thinking is you? Is there identification with images? Is there noise? Are you hearing noises in your environment? Is there identification with noise? So recognize, start to recognize what's being identified. And as you continue to listen to the sound of my voice, if you're just in a state <clears throat> of eternal silence, then you can let go of my voice and just rest in that. But if you are identifying with anything, then realize that when there is a ceasing of identification with whatever form is being identified with, it disappears. And that's a law of consciousness, that something which is not identified with or hooked into or given any interest does not exist. 
So whatever, if you are hooking into or identified with your body, with your thoughts, with images, I'll give you this metaphor. When I went to live in my current property, I could hear that the, the, it's just outside a train track, the Piccadilly line, a tube track. And I could hear the, the, the train passing every few minutes. But then after a while it became boring. It was uninteresting. It was kind of like uh, not no. And then eventually it was not noticed. And then eventually I didn't even hear the tube. So this just goes to show what happens in consciousness. When consciousness chooses not to identify with anything, then it stops being experienced in experience, it disappears. It, it disappears into nothingness, as a nothing. So, <clears throat> sound can disappear when it has no identification or no interest. Thoughts disappear, the body disappears. This, the idea of this and that and separation disappears. All these things disappear. So allow things, allow whatever is being identified to be released. Now if anything is being held on, if you're still holding on to anything which is creating a sense of individuated or separated self, experience how you experience your separated self and ask what's observing that. So if you're whatever you're experiencing yourself in whatever limited or contracted way, now be that which is witnessing or observing that. If this is being done correct, you'll, you'll recognize that it's an external thing. And if you become the detached observer, then it will be something that's hardly noticed. And if there is still any noticing, you can go to the observer of the observer, and then you'll realize that it's gone as you go deeper within. If there is a fluctuating state where you're noticing something and then you're not noticing something and then you're noticing something and you're not noticing something then just ask what's observing? Be in that which observes the fluctuation. What's observing the fluctuation of in and out? And what's observing that? The observer of the fluctuation is not interested in the fluctuation and hence the fluctuation disappears. So as you go deeper and deeper within, what's observing the observer? And what's observing that observer? And does that observer have any interest in anything? And if it does, what's observing that? You'll start to, at some point, recognize an eternal stillness that's here. And as you recognize this eternal stillness, allow yourself to cocoon and be in this silence or in this stillness. And if at any point a thought or a sensation emerges and hooks in or identifies, then just again go to that which is observing it and de identify, unhook, and just remain in the eternal stillness.